Logging is both important and challenging. How does a logger design and address the issues? Find out in today's video. Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing? This is the seventh episode in the series Build a Library with Me. I started this series because during the build of the library, I just find like there's a lot of .NET technology that is needed, and I think those technologies might be useful to you as well. So far, we've been talking about the delegate, the extension method, options patterns, I configurations, and we're going to talk about iLogger today. In this one, I'll talk about why logging is important, what logging looked like before iLogger, the design of iLogger, how to use logging providers, how to set logging levels, how to filter logs by category, and how do we apply those knowledges in ASP.NET Core application as well as the JWT authentication library. I am excited because I feel like there are so many good stuff there. Stay tuned and let's get started. Logging is very useful. Compared to debugging, it has some really great advantages. For example, it do not block the execution flow, so you know how fast or how slow things happen. And once set, the information is always going to be there. There's no need to add the values to the watch window again and again. And also, logging files can be used for retrospective. Remote logging is the more fit for a production system. It is also a challenge. There are scenarios that we want more logs, there are scenarios that we want less. And then, in different environments, we might want logs to be put into different places as well. For example, on local box, it is okay if the logs are all put into the debug window, but in the product system, that's probably not going to work. So today, we're going to look deep into iLogger that is lately introduced in .NET Core. And from top down, we're going to see how the design of iLogger addresses the issues that, that we mentioned earlier. Let's go. There are two common utilities that will be used for logging before iLogger. One is through this uh, console class. It provides methods like write line. It writes a line of text to the console. Another class is uh, debug. Debug is provided in system.diagnostics uh, namespace. It also provides methods like write line similar to the console, except it doesn't output to the console. Usually, it is integrated with the IDE and outputted somewhere. For example, inside the VS Code, it outputs the line of text into the debug console. That's pretty much it. It's simple and effective, but there are some disadvantages. For example, once the code is uh, compiled, it is difficult to condition the output for the logs. The hello world will always be there on the console. On the other hand, there's limited output place. What if the app doesn't show the console by default, like WPF apps or WinForms? It also doesn't support advanced scenarios like showing logs for different levels. For example, when it is debugging or when it is running in production, uh, we want to show some information but hide the others. It seems like we need a redesign of a logging system. Imagine that we are here to design the logging system. What would we want? The first thing I would want is the, for me to output the logs to different places simultaneously so that I can see the logs in different places, like in the console, in the debugger window, potentially in the log file or all other places. Each of these places stores the logs and it allows the consumer to read the contents. So these are called providers. The second feature that I would want to have is logging levels. For example, log level of debug only shows information that is uh, for debugging purpose, and it won't show anything when the app is running in the production system. There's log level dot information, which is the informative information, and then there could be log level of arrow that we might want to emphasize, like showing the text in red color to catch the attention of the user. Not only that, I would want the user to configure well, what level of logs to show. We usually don't show debug logs in the production system, but we are experienced programmers, and we all know every once in a while, there is a bug that only shows up in product environment. Should that happen, and it will, we would want to turn on the debugging logs for a while just to see what's happening. So here we go. Multiple providers, different levels, and a flexible configuration system. And of course, iLogger provides all of them. Actually, it provides more, and I'll show you how next. I'll start with the very simple example. The code will write a line of log onto the console so that you got a feeling what it takes to run an iLogger. 
The first step is to add the proper NuGet package. For console logging provider, the package name is microsoft.extensions.logging.console. I'll add links to the description below, so you don't have to remember the exact name. Then, we'll need to create the logger factory. There is a factory method named create on the logger factory. It takes in a delegate so that the factory could be easily configured. We'll talk more about that later. For now, we got an instance of an iLogger factory so that we can make use of that to create an iLogger instance. And finally, we could use uh, logger to log information now. So I'm going to log in information and a message for debugging. Here, I'm also putting in a trick so that the process won't be killed too early. Now, if we run the app, we'll be so disappointed that we see nothing. And that is because we don't have any logger providers as registered in the logger factory. And let's do it now. Now that the provider of console is added, let's run the code again. And yay, we see hello information from our logger. So what we did, we added a reference to the NuGet package. Then we created a logger factory. We configured the logger providers on it, used it to create an iLogger, and we used the iLogger instance to output different levels of information. Once we have one provider working for the logging, adding more providers becomes easy peasy. For example, if I want to add another provider for debug, here's what I'm going to do. Step one, add the NuGet package that contains the logging provider. Step two, register it in the iLogger factory. Now if I debug the application, I'll see the message both in the console as well as the debug console. And that is one of the extension points in the iLogger system. If you want the logger to be output to other places like a file or something, as long as you can find the proper logging provider, you could plug it in. At this moment, you may have noticed that I have two lines of log output, one for information, one for debug. But only log information is outputting the log. And I think you must have guessed that is because the default minimum level is set to information. Let's take a deep look at the levels. There are actually seven baked in logging levels trace, debug, information, warning, arrow, critical, and num. The higher on the stack, the less chatty. So debug is less chatty than trace, information is less chatty than debug, so on and so forth. On the iLogger factory, we can set a minimum level. It is default to information, so it won't show logins in level of debug or trace. Sometimes we want to tweak the minimum levels, set it to higher so that only critical information is seen, or set it lower so that it will be more helpful for debugging. Let's see how to do it in code. One way to let is call this uh, set minimum level directly on the logging factory. And once we did that, when we run the app, we'll see both messages. Having a simple configuration like the minimum level is great, but iLogger doesn't just stop there. It allows to use an i configuration section to provide the settings. And if you watch the last video in this series, you know how powerful the configuration pattern is. Coming up, I'll show you how to set this minimum level from the i configuration, and I will use the in memory object provider because that is a simple one. But the same settings could be provided from all kinds of uh, configuration providers. Check out the video if you haven't already. Now, let me show you how to set the configurations from iConfiguration. The first step, of course, is to get an iConfiguration. What I put here is a section of lock level, and then the default for the category. We're going to talk more about category later. And the value to default, this is the minimum level. And then, on the delegate, call the method addConfiguration and give it the iConfiguration object. Let's remove this set minimum level statement because we don't need it anymore. And if we run the app, we'll still see two logging entries. It is a common scenario for us to want to have different minimum levels for different logging providers. For example, we usually want the debug provider to be very chatty so that we can see a lot of details when we debug in the app. We would want the console logging to be relatively clearer. Maybe the information level would be good enough. And then if we have a file provider, 
we may only want to have warnings or errors in it, so the file won't be blown up. You get the idea. And I'll show you how to do that in I configuration. It is actually as simple as uh, making a section that is specific for the provider. For example, this is how we set the minimum level for the console log provider. The logging provider will looking for configurations specific to its own first. So in theory, the console provider won't show debug level of information now because the minimum level is set to information. And the debug provider is still going to show both. Let's run the app to verify it. As we can see, the console only shows the log for the information, but the debug console shows logs for both. So we have different minimal levels for different providers. In some cases, even for the same level, we could configure it so that some of the logs will be shown and some of the others won't. And that is done by category. Category is actually an arbitrary string. It is set on the logger object. By convention, it would be the fully qualified name for the current class. For example, if the log information is called on the logger within Microsoft.hosting class, the category name would be Microsoft.hosting. And for the class of your own, it will be under your own namespace. And that gives us the capability to turn on logs for part of the system. This is extremely useful when you are debugging a specific subsystem. Let's take a look at the code example. When we create an iLogger, pay attention to the type parameter. It provides the information for the category. In this case, it is console example two dot program. Now let's say if I want to see every detail of the logs for this category, I could configure the log level for it to trace. And the way to do it is by putting the prefix of the category as a child of the log level. Now by default, for the console provider, the minimum level for the logging to show up is the information, unless it is from the category of console example 2.program. Then the minimum level is the trace. Let's run it and see how it goes. If the category wasn't set, the hello debug wouldn't show up. One thing that I want to point out is the filter for the category is based on partial matching, and it uses the rule of start with. That means anything start with the console example 2.program will be matched by the filter. The other side of the same coin, if I set the rule to match console example 2, the console of example 2 dot program or any other class will also match. Leverage that will give you very granular control of what or how many logs to show. That was iLogger in console app. Let's take a look at the case in ASP.NET Core application. For ASP.NET Core, the first thing that we may notice is that iLogger is already available to be injected in the controller. We could immediately use it without problem, just like it on line 24. Whenever the weather forecast controller is constructed, there will be a message. Let's try it. Now that we see it works, here are the questions. Who's creating the iLogger instance? Where are the providers registered? Can we add our own providers? And how do we do the logging configurations? Let's address them one by one. iLogger is created by iLogger Factory, and the iLogger Factory is registered in the dependency container. I know that because I read the comment on this create default builder method. Here it says, configure the iLog Factory to log to console, debug, and event source output. So iLogger Factory will be created, and then there will be providers of console, debug, and event source. And if we want to add one or two other providers, here's how to do it. We just call config logging on the web builder. The delegate provides an iLogging builder. And that's the one we used in the console app to add providers. Let's add a console provider here. Actually, if you don't like the baked in providers, you can call this clear providers to start over. Configuration of iLogger is done by iConfiguration. And we also know for ASP.NET Core application, the configuration providers had been registered. So let's leverage the files configuration provider to change the levels. For example, if I only want to show the logs for my code, I'll bump up the minimum levels for Microsoft to none. Since none is the highest level, I would expect the only logs for my category. And let's try it. Here we go, only logs from mine, 
no logs from Microsoft hosting dot lifetime or any other categories. In the JWT authentication library, I leverage the log filtering by levels. For example, here on line 36, the library will issue a warning when the issuer signing secret is not set by the configurations. And then I just leave it to the user's hands to configure the providers for logins. For example, if the user do not put any login providers to their application, or they somehow cleared all the providers, they would not see the warning. However, for the majority, they would see a warning if they do not set issuer signing secret. Because the console login provider, the debug login provider, and the event source provider will be there by default. Another leverage is for the category filtering. Here on line 28, when iLogger of T is injected, I requested the iLogger of JWP auth options. This makes the iLogger following the category convention, and the user could decide to set the minimum level for the category due to their needs. So in general, for a library, we only need to answer two questions for the logs. What's the level of the message? And what's the category? Everything else is left to the hands of the users. It is easier for the library writer to make it correct. At the same time, the user's configuration becomes very powerful and flexible for different logging strategies. And that's the elegance of the iLogger. Before we wrap up, I want to share my special thanks to Extremely Prejudice, who may ask the Discord server for this channel. I didn't have one at that time, but I created one. Now I'll put a link to the invitation in the description, and feel free to join me there as well. Now let's wrap up. Thanks for watching. I hope you have better understanding of the logging system in ASP.NET Core. If you like the content, please press the like button below. Your encouragement is my best motivation to keep up. Leave me a feedback, and don't forget to subscribe if you like these topics. Keep coding, keep improving, and I'll see you in the next video. Before then, take care.